We're going to go straight into the Word, jump right into the Word. Uh, it's good. So we're, we're into 2 Kings chapter 6. We're studying the last couple of weeks what King of Glory. Who the King of Glory? Who is the King of Glory? Amen. He's the Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of Glory can come in. So every revival has to understand how the glory works. We're, we're experiencing the glory this morning and last Sunday. Amen. That's the glory of the Lord. So in 2 Kings 6, we read about Elisha. Elisha, and we're starting at verse 8. And we're going to just read the story of Elisha from 8 to 17. Jesus. Thank you. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I'll set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God, that's Elisha, sent a word to the king of Israel, beware of passing by that place because the Armenians are going to come down from there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, will you not tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, the Lord, my lord the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He's in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do, the servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Wow, so we're seeing what I want you to see here. Um, we don't get puffed up, like the word says, talking about a lot about angels. We don't worship angels. But wherever you see the glory or revival uh, coming down, wherever you see the anointing, wherever God is doing something, you will see angels at work. And... Um, We've actually experienced that. Uh, we might not get past point number one, but that's okay. There is angelic activity wherever revival is being poured out. And I think of the last wave, uh, some of you will remember, uh, when this church was first birthed, we were having revival meetings every night that would last about 12 or 1 in the morning. And uh, lots of things were happening. People were being saved, delivered. Uh, people were bringing their children for deliverance. Uh, we saw people sometimes once and never saw them again, uh, but we were at that point a, a filling station as well. And uh, one night after we were finished ministering, we went outside and the skies were all lit up, sort of like the northern lights, except it was in April. I said, Lord, what is that? And a song came to my mind as soon as I asked the Holy Spirit, and it was, Angels from the realms of glory bid your flight o'er all the earth. You who told creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. And it was like, it was the angels of the Lord in the heavenly, so tangibly and manifested. Uh, and I want to just share that with you. Um, Again, it's just to know that they're there, whether you see them or not. Amen. Amen. Elisha saw them, and he prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened so that the servant could as well see them. And uh, so just to know... Angels are ministering spirits. They are sent by the Lord to minister to the heirs of salvation. How many heirs of salvation do we have here today? Amen. So the Lord sends his angels to minister to us. 
and we don't often get to see them uh, even in that realm in that uh, just behind the clouds we got to see the angelic activity and it was a sign and a wonder some people got their lawn chairs out and watched the 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 show in the sky for several hours before they went to bed because there was that much angelic activity around that time uh, powerfully and the word says that they are uh, flaming that they're like fire ministers of fire and there was another time many of you will remember I shared uh, this is going back probably a couple years maybe uh, Gil and I um, just during a real intense time of war warfare uh, breakthroughs regarding town council and everything uh, Gil and I came outside and we were going to take a hot tub and I s no sooner stepped out the back door and I saw fire all the way uh, the, to one side of our property uh, again I said Lord if that's real, if that's you, if that's your presence, I said, please open Gil's eyes. So I'm not going to say anything to him. So he was upstairs getting his bathing suit on, came down, and I said, "Hun, do you see anything over there? He goes, yeah, it looks like the trees are all on fire. And so I ran through the house to the front door, opened the front door, and it was surrounding our property. Again, they're there all the time. And they're not just there in our life. They're there in your life. And we don't always see them. Um, but there's things, uh, when you see uh, a lot of activity, even this praying that the river of the Holy Spirit will be stirred up, knowing what God's doing on the earth today and putting demand on that, invites angels, because the angels hearken, the Bible says, to the word of God. Amen? So they have to... Uh, they're looking for places where there's action. Amen? So we want to make sure they've got something to work with. When I'm calling the angels, there's angels of all kinds of different activities. There are guardian angels. There are warring angels. There are praising angels. There are all kinds of angels. There are angels being released called angels of transition. There are revival angels. There's angels that call out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen? Uh, they're wanting to see the harvest. They behold, the Bible says, uh, the even guardian angels of little children behold the Father's face at all times. So that's a, a, a warning for us to be careful how you treat these little ones because they're, they're, their angels are beholding the face of the Lord at all times. So I just, I don't, we don't go into, you know, worship of angels or anything else. We pray to the Father and know that there are angels and we put a demand on the angels and we ask the Holy Spirit how we can activate those angels. And Elisha knew how. He expected them and he saw them. And so again, I, th I believe that we can pray that our eyes will be opened. That we can be in on what God is doing in heaven. That's why the Lord's Prayer says, uh, Hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And many of us think heaven is very far, far, far away. But we want to see heaven touching earth. Amen. Amen. We want to see, we want to know that, that God's releasing his angels over this place. Whatever they do, they gather someday. The Bible says they will gather the elect from, the, from all the, of the earth. There are gathering angels. Amen. So they're going to be very active in the end time harvest. Amen. Angels will be very active in the gathering of the harvest. And we need all the help we can get. Amen. We need all the help we can get. I want to know, and I just think you can be a little bit too careful about, oh, well, I don't know if we can do that. It's like, Lord, cover us in Jesus' name, but I'm putting demand on angelic activity. I want to see revival. Amen. I want to see revival. I want to see the Lord gather the lost. I look back at that time where we, a few times where we got to see, I get a, get a bit of a glimpse of, of angelic activity, and, and we think of it as a, a very much of a highlight. 
There was another time when we first moved here back from St. Thomas. Uh, I was out uh, praying. And, and when we first moved, I, I kind of had to get my bearings geographically uh, where we were in the spirit. And it felt like I had to kind of make a place for myself. And so I spent a lot of time up in the middle of the night looking out to the heavenlies. And I saw these balls of light, big balls of light. And it was a time when the Gulf War was going on. And on the news, they were showing the warfare that was going on in the dark. And you could see these missiles uh, going off in the, in, the, in the dark. But so in the natural, in the spiritual, sorry, uh, when I experienced and I saw that warfare going on, the Lord opened my eyes that one particular night and thought, this is the warfare that's going on right outside of your property. But not one single missile crossed, crossed the property line. When you're doing something for Jesus, you're giving the angels something to do. Amen? And we're giving the angels something to do because we're taking this ground in Jesus' name. We are going to see revival. It's going to be amazing. Amen? And so we have to have ears to, to hear and we have to have eyes to see because when we get on the same page of what God is doing, we are going to see phenomenal things. The Lord Jesus Christ is a mighty warrior. He is the Lord. He is the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty in battle. How many of you know there's a battle going on for the souls, for families? And we need the angels of the Lord. And so I believe the fact that we just are preaching about it. Actually, it was so cool. Yes, uh, last Sunday, I just got through. I was on such a high when we got back from church. I said, Lord, if all you did was touch John Klein, because I've been praying for him. We ain't seen nothing yet in that young man's life. But if that's all you did, I would be thrilled. But that's not all the Lord did. Amen. And... Um, I just, there was just too many things. I could have wrote a book about last Sunday. But as I did, I was kind of, one thing I like to do is I kind of worship God in the water, in my pool. I just worship God and I'm praying to the Lord. And, and um, the Lord just, just put in my heart uh, just the angelic activity uh, that's going on. And he brought to mind, I had seen an intercession. Some of you might remember when we were praying before worship. I said, I see a whirlwind. And I got Elijah list the next day, and God was saying that he's sending whirlwind. And, you know, it's just so awesome to see confirmation. I want to I share with you, I want you to catch this to where you say, I want to see too. Amen. Amen. Like Elisha prayed, and then he prayed for his servants, servants and said, open their eyes so they, he can see. And as soon as the servants saw, so I'm going to pray for you right now that your eyes would be opened. Amen. And angels are nothing to be afraid of. I had an experience last night at Beth and Chris's where I'm telling you the fear of the Lord. I, I felt an angel. I didn't see this angel, but I have, I can say it was a, not a bad fear, but I have never had such a fear of the Lord. I, in, in, right in my, I was sleep, sort of sleeping. I was in the semi place and I just got on my knees because there was this big angel in the room. And it, do you know, the thing is, is like, as the Lord is teaching me about this is like, I'm starting to experience it. And I just, a baby when it comes to that, a few times I've had a few glimpses, but it's like, oh God, what's to all of this? Amen. What's to the, what's, uh, what's all this about angels? And can we activate angels? Uh, and I'm just throwing it out there because who can study revival and who can study and understand everything in the spirit realm? And yet, when we see something and hear something, God confirms, yes, the whirlwind, that's what I'm doing. Yes, there's a, an increase of angelic activity. And whenever you see the glory touchdown in the word of God, you're going to look. Look for yourself. Do, do a little adventure seeking in the word yourself. And whenever you see something, something miraculous. Wherever you see the glory of the Lord, guess what you read about? Angels. At Jesus' birth. There, there they were. Singing glory to God in the highest and on earth. 
peace unto all men. At the harvest, at the end, what do you see? Angels shouting across, glory to God, glory to God. And on earth, peace. Let the whole earth be filled with the glory of God. What do you see when you see revival touched down and there's warfare going on? You hear about angels. Attack, yes. And there's going to be many attacks. There are, we are at war. But we have angels. Amen. Amen. There's going to be more experiences. Gil and I once watched a documentary of Israel. And these aren't born-again soldiers. They're Israeli soldiers. And the accounts and testimonies, they did a, a reproduction of a lot of these stories where the troops were literally stopped because they saw angelic lights and angels and they could go no farther. So it's not just, oh, we're reading about it in the Bible, some dusty old book. I mean, God is doing this in our day. Amen. He's doing it here and we need the angels of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to pray and ask the Lord, who have you assigned? Lord, I'm asking for them in Jesus' name. And any angels that are bored because nobody else is activating them, just we call them over. Red Rover, Red Rover. We're calling the troops over. Amen. <laughs> this is call them over and we're just declaring if revival's happening on the earth and it's being prophesied, we're going to be a part of it and we're not going to let this wave pass us by. Okay. Amen. Because we want to see the soul saved and we want to see harvest and we want to see changed lives and lives are being changed. And God is, is wanting to work with us. This is so awesome. So wherever we see the glory of the Lord, we're going to see angels at work. Amen. Ask the Lord. Open my eyes. I want to see. I want to see God. I want to know what they do. I want to know what I can pray. I want to look in the word and find out how can I activate the angels of the Lord. I've got angels. Whose are those angels? What do they do? Angels on assignment. Amen. And so I just want to whet your appetite a little bit so that you find out what they're doing. Amen. Amen. Can I give you a revelation this morning? That yeah. Gave me an Please. Sure. Can I, can yeah. I do that? Yeah. Just, Come on. Fresh. It's quick. It's quick. It's okay. It's, just good. it's, just it's all good. good. I was reading in Peter this morning, and he's talking about this great salvation that we have. It was First Peter 1, and he talks about even angels long to look into these things. Wow. Like they long to look into it. Well, they don't understand it. They don't get it. They can't look into the gospel. They can't look into the word and get what we get out of it. Right? Yeah. We know that God sent his word to heal us. Well, you know what the devil is? Liar. He's an angel. He longs to look into the word, but he can't get what you can get because he's just an angel. He longs to look into it because do you know what? He'd have power against you that he wouldn't ordinarily have. See, all the angels long to look into the word. That's what I found about. Amen. They long to look into it. But you know what? Amen. The devil will yes, never know understand. what's going on in my word Amen. and that God sent his word to heal me. Hallelujah. Because he's just an angel. Amen. Amen. And he's a fallen one at that. And he's a defeated one at that. Amen. And the word says, we will soon crush Satan under our feet. Amen. Amen. So angels are ministering spirits. They're not human beings. We have a privilege far above the angels. But if they're ministering servants, then I believe they're listening right now and going, oh, good. We're preaching the word. We're giving them the green light to say, be activated in our lives. What can the angels of the Lord do? And we might find there's all kinds of angels for all kinds of purposes. It's just amazing. I took, always took great comfort in just the guardian angels when I pray the blood of Jesus over each one of my children before they went to school or out the door wherever. Father, the blood of Jesus over their hearts and minds, over their physical bodies, and Lord, the angels of the Lord to watch over them. And I never worried. There were times where I go, I could tell you a few stories where, oh my goodness, and yet the, the devil could not touch my children. Amen. Couldn't touch. And there's just such confidence in the guardian angels, but there's many other angels. I believe that there are angels that have literally been uh, reserved and waiting around for the harvest, for us to activate them. So whatever they do, whatever you do, if you're listening, hearken to the word of the Lord and go and gather. Amen? And gather the angels. So wherever you see the glory, you will see angels at work. 
So Lord, open our eyes so that we can be aware. And all the glory goes to the Lord. Amen. I think sometimes people are afraid of talking about angels because then they'll talk to the angels and pray to the angels. You don't do that. You pray to the Heavenly Father. Amen. And, and you just uh, lay hold of, of every resource that the Lord has given us, the power of the blood, the power of the name, the angels of the Lord. We, these are all weapons in our right hand and weapons in our left. And Elisha understood and he knew. And, he, and he, that was his reality. That was part of his reality. He understood the glory realm. We're just trying to understand. I'm just trying to understand. I know one thing, activating the glory realm, you got to get to this place like we took this morning where we just took time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 And he's there because he resides. He dwells within the praises of his people. The king of glory dwells when we invite him, lift up the gates, the everlasting doors that the king of glory comes in. So you raise your hands, you call on him, king of glory, Amen. angels of the Lord, come minister, come worship with us. Amen. Amen. And so we see Elisha experience that. And wherever you hear about the glory, point number two, you'll see the gifts in operation. The gifts in operation. Prophetic. Amen. The Bible says, eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. Especially that you might prophesy. Why is that so important? Because prophecy comes to edify, console, build up, build us up in our most holy faith. Amen. And so we need built up. We need to have that pro prophetic word. Here, Elisha gets a word of knowledge. And he's wondering, what's happening? How come we can never defeat Israel? It's because there was a prophet in the land. And one of the officers had enough insight and to say, there's a prophet in Israel. And God tells them anything and everything. He tells him, even the words that you speak in your bedroom. So guess what, king? You're not safe. Mm -hmm. Amen. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. The glory realm is a protective realm. We don't have to worry. Though many surround us, though there be many attacks, they can't touch us. The Lord says, he sits in the heavens and he laughs. Amen. But you'll see, you'll see this word of knowledge. And then he gets a word of wisdom in the next part of the chapter where he literally asks the Lord, as he asks the Lord to strike, uh, open the eyes of his servants, now he's asking the Lord to blind the eyes of his enemies. And uh, he literally leads them. You'll have to read this story later because we're short on time today. But he leads them right into the jaws, into the mouth of the enemy. And then he says, okay, open their eyes now. And he opens their eyes and he sees, oh no, now what do we do? So we need to pray and eagerly desire these gifts. Eagerly desire that you say, I have the mind of Christ. Father, I'm eagerly desiring those gifts, those gifts of knowledge that you might know supernaturally, insight into your children's needs, into your friends, into your husband, where you just have a word of knowledge and you're going, I just know I need to pray right now. I don't, I don't understand oh, what's coming over me, but you know how to yield to the spirit. Amen. Yield to the spirit in intercession, in words of knowledge. Yes, you can know. And it can set people free. Why do we need these words of knowledge? I remember they used to come to me uh, just when I was talking to people. I was walking beside a, a friend that I'd known for years, uh, down Byron, and as she's talking, all of a sudden I'm not hearing a word she's saying, and the Lord, Holy Spirit says she's having an affair with a man named, and he gave me the name of the man. And so I said, oh my goodness. I asked her. I had to ask her three times. I said, because the Lord just kept repeating himself. And I said, no, the Holy Spirit is telling me right now, you're having an affair. And then she broke. But her marriage is saved. Yeah. Yeah. She's still married to the same man today. She got out, out of the snare of the fowler. And that's what, why we need the gifts in operation. Because God loves people. Amen. Amen. He wants to show them a way of escape. Surely he will save you from the snare of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And that's why it's so important that we stay full of the Holy Spirit. On the cutting edge. Nothing compares 
There is not a joy. There is nothing that the earth can, can give us that satisfies more than to being used by the Lord to save a life. Amen. And so where the glory falls, we're going to hear, we're going to see more gifts in operation. Amen. If God has blessed you with the prophetic, learn how to stir that up. Take steps and just uh, begin to release words of edification and consolation and comfort over people. And just be bold enough to speak it. Amen. Because that's where, otherwise, there's so many times we go to stifle it, and I go, afterwards, the glory of it's gone. I'm so thankful that I spoke out of my mouth about the whirlpool, about the whirlwind, because then when I read about it in Elijah, I go, God is just, he's pouring out a spirit, a, a whirlwind. And you know what a whirlwind will do? It'll gather everything together and deposit in one little pile. The wind of the Holy Ghost is going to do supernaturally where we just go, what is that? What caused that? Amen. And we want to stir up the glory realm in such a way so that we see an increase of angelic activity, see an increase of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then where the glory of the Lord is, there is present a love for people even enemies here in this thing when they finally trick the enemy bring them right into the jaws of the enemy bring them right into Samaria and then the Lord opens the enemy's eyes and there's their the king of Israel their one that they were they were after right in front of them and they said shall we kill him shall we kill him oh father he says no why not kill them we're going to set a feast in front of them we're going to feed them and then we're going to send them back home and guess what? That was the end of the warfare. Love is the answer. When the enemy comes, as Jesus said, feed your enemy. Pray for those who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. Because the Bible says, love never fails. So we have heard some testimonies of God loosing supernatural love on people where you're just going, I know I've had experience the love of the Father. Lisa's testimony, where you're just going, what love is this? Oh my goodness, what love is this? It stops you in your track, even if they're your worst enemies there'll be an opportunity. And that's how the Lord's going to bring in the harvest. Amen. Where's the glory of the Lord? Where the glory of the Lord is, there'll be increase of angelic activity. There'll be an increase of the gifts of the Spirit. There'll be an increase of love for our enemies. Amen. So that we can bring in the harvest and work with the angels of the Lord and bring in the harvest. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. And we're not going to let... Uh, we're not going to drop the ball. Amen. We're not going to drop the ball. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We're just going to go out with a hymn and go and have a blessed week. Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that the Lord Jesus Christ, you will bless your people, every single one of us. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you his peace. Oh, all God's people you, said, Amen. Amen.